What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? Welcome to episode 10 of the Safety Scissors and Duct Tape Podcast. I'm Safety Scissors. And I'm Duct Tape. And one day we're going to lose count. Yes. <laughs> easily. It's going to happen because every time I'm like, what was the last uh, one? <laughs> <laughs> but today we're going to talk about something that's coming soon. Y2K. Wait. You really are stuck in the 90s, aren't you? <laughs> Wait. Isn't that, isn't that about to happen? No. Oh. No, that happened literally 21 years ago. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Yes. Have you ever felt old? <laughs> I just I just got there. We're talking about Y2K, the the turn of the century in the 90s and the thing everyone was afraid of mm-hmm. or excited about for one reason or another mm-hmm. and it was all the hype mm-hmm. and then <laughs> mm-hmm. And why are we doing this? Well, because doesn't this feel the same? It's mm-hmm. not even like a monumental year. This is just turning into 2021. Mm-hmm. Like it's New Year's. And we're like, doesn't this feel like Y2K? Doesn't this it feel really like does. the world could end and we just don't know mm-hmm. and it could happen? It's it's like 2012 with the well, Aztec calendar. Well, the thing is, is that the Aztec calendar, if you read it, it might have been 2021. Oh, no. But that's beside the point. I'm Why not a conspiracy theorist this? or I don't believe in that kind of craziness. Whatever. All I'm saying is that we lived through that time and at oh a very gosh. interesting age. The mm-hmm. We were coming of age as the world was coming of age. Mm-hmm. We were moving into the 21st century as we were 17 and 18 mm-hmm. years old. So we weren't the adults going, nah, technology is scary, but it's not this scary. And we weren't the kids going, what's Y2K? Is, is it going to interrupt my cartoons? Mm-hmm. You know, like we were... We were actually scared. We were mm-hmm. like, this this could be a thing. We understood technology better than most of the adults in the world at that point. Mm-hmm. And oh, so yeah. we were like, what does happen when all the dates go to zero? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> What a silly thing, though. Like, you, th- we didn't think that they programmed them in four numbers. Mm-hmm. Like, really? And But that's the funny part is that, like, back then, I remember everybody was freaking out like, oh, it's going to say it's like 1900 and everything's going to go like crap. But why would it make it do that? Just because it said it was 1900, does the internet suddenly go, oh, I have to draw a horse and carriage now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like... And it's like, but if you actually looked at computers, most of them, the earliest date on them that it was able to go back to was like 1952 because of like data books and things like that. I kind of remember that, yeah. So it literally wouldn't have gone back that far. But honestly, though, a lot of the uh, software out there wasn't programmed to have a two at the beginning because a lot of people were making software only to last a couple years. That could have caused a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Could it have caused the end of the world? No. Mm-hmm. But for anyone that doesn't know what Y2K was, maybe you guys are younger than us and you weren't <laughs> around. Um, Y2K was this big thing. As the year turned to 2000, mm-hmm. suddenly you weren't going to have a 19 in front of all of your dates anymore. And the whole world went what are computers going to do oh my goodness everything's going to everything's going to just explode and the world is going to end and technology as we know it is going to be destroyed and you know what they weren't wrong about that <laughs> technology as we knew it back then is destroyed except that Nokia phone that you cannot destroy oh yeah the thing that can like ride in the washing machine five or six times fall down the stairs and get run over by a semi truck and it's still <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, um, that's what Y2K was. Mm-hmm. Everyone was terrified that the computers wouldn't know what to do when the date switched from 19s to 2000s or from like actual numbers to zeros. Mm-hmm. They had no idea what anyone was going to do with that. And all the people that made the technology were like, no, seriously, this is fine. But you know, as we well know in 2020, widespread panic is pretty easy to drum up. So. And the best part is back then there was no social media and nothing like that. And so basically, you got your news from the TV and from the newspaper still. Or from the or AOL from chat the, room. And for the AOL chat rooms or like <laughs> Yahoo and like different like... Yeah, Yahoo and MSN. Yeah, they would tell you like what was going on. But again, it wasn't widespread enough to do like social media or like it wasn't updated quick enough. Mm-hmm. You had no idea. And there was no way to really get in touch with people like that was not there. And then now, and now it's like... Walmart on this road does not have toilet paper. Send everybody in the <laughs> known area. You know what I mean? Like Okay, but can we actually talk about that for a second? Hmm. The biggest thing in in the coming of 2000 was literally the end of the world. Mm-hmm. 
and we could not have anticipated the apocalypse that to that 2020 has become mm -hmm. where our first problem of this whole year the first real problem of the whole year was mm -hmm. a toilet paper shortage mm -hmm. coronavirus doesn't even cause gastrointestinal issues why was there a toilet paper shortage Honestly, that doesn't make any does it make you pee 16 times an hour like Honestly, as a survivalist, really I can tell you that something like <laughs> toothpaste, toilet paper, toothbrushes are great trading commodities. So if the end of the world was happening, it would be a great thing to have to trade for stuff. However, <laughs> onions, everything like that you would eat that was perishable was gone. Who buys 15 onions at a time? <laughs> this year or in 2000? In 2020. Literally, like when I went to the store, there was no onions, no nothing onions yeah i was like what like asparagus was gone it's like i don't I okay don't... asparagus i get but you can't just like eat an onion no. but okay yeah, it was just it was just wild and it just showed you that you know some people didn't know what to get or what they needed and they saw they heard radio station or website a said toilet paper shortage so they ran out and everybody got more. went and got it so that way they weren't short and to be honest, I have an abundance of it now because I started just like getting one package every time I went out, whether mm -hmm. I needed it or not. I just got one package. And so now I have kind of a stash, mm -hmm. but I'm ready for the next toilet paper shortage. You know, it's good. We're, so we're good. if the apocalypse is happening and you need to trade, hit us up. Yeah. <laughs> I also, um, my mom taught me how to coupon for like soap and mm -hmm. toothpaste and stuff like that. So I have other trading commodities too. <laughs> Anyway, also, I'm a great person to have on your team if you need it uh, as a it's, survivalist. It's true. It's why I hang out with him, just in case. She's but, like, zombies are coming. Run. So year 2000, mm -hmm. what were people buying back then? I don't I, I didn't go shopping. I remember batteries were like the hardest thing to find because people were buying flashlights. Anything that you would put in like a hurricane kit. Did they think the lamps were on dates too? They thought like, like that, that. The electrical they, they grid. They thought the electric grid was going to go down. So they were expecting that. So they were buying everything to do like campfires, to do flashlights, to do hand crank radios. Oh everything. my gosh. And it's like, it was just wild just watching people. Because I was, I was 18 at that point or I was turning 18 in 2000, right? In yeah, yeah. 2000, I turned 18, so I was 17 when that happened. So I was old enough to remember, and I was old enough to go to the store and shop. So I remember like watching people panic. And it was just like... I worked at a grocery store, mm -hmm. actually. I remember now. I worked at a grocery store at that time. Mm -hmm. I don't remember people buying batteries, but I, I understand why. I don't remember what they bought. Mm -hmm. But I do remember around New Year's, pandemonium. It was absolute pandemonium. People were buying things left and right. There were I know canned food. People stocked up on canned mm -hmm. food. It was like, I live in Florida, right? So honestly, for New Year's, instead of people buying stuff to have New Year's parties, people were buying like hurricane supplies. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here like, is there a hurricane? A hurricane season was over like a month ago. But maybe two. People were also selling their stocks their bonds like any oh, investment yeah. that they had Just because they case. thought that it was the end of the world so they wanted to have the cash so that they could buy stuff and it was just like i remember the uh the stock market crashed i remember all of that and it was just wild to me because 17 year old me now 38 year old me looking back i wish 17 year old me would have had money and invested but i didn't have money because i worked at a skating rink and yeah, I did not yeah. make money then. I worked at a grocery store. That yeah. job wasn't going to work. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my five seventy five an hour <laughs> was not going to cut it. Gosh, I don't even remember. I think it was like six something an hour back then. Man, I we can probably... do a whole video. We can do a whole podcast on mm -hmm. minimum wage jobs in the 90s. Oh, yeah. But it was just, <laughs> I remember watching all this. Uh, one of my buddies actually made kits. It was survival kits, and he had batteries, flashlight, hand crank radios. Just because it was turning two thousand. He spent like thirty dollars on each of those and was selling them for about a hundred bucks. He made a nice little profit. Yeah, that's a smart friend right yeah. there. Me, I'm like, I can't even afford a battery. Because <laughs> oh my gosh. But and I just, I, I couldn't believe it, and I remember, I don't know if you did this when you first found out about the Y2K bug. I went and changed the date on my computer to December 31st, 1999 to see what would happen. And it went to 
52, I think it was. I think I had my boyfriend do those things because mm-hmm. I didn't I didn't care about mm-hmm. any of that. But he was like this computer buff. And so I, w- he made sure my computer was going to be okay and still able to run Quake 3 Arena. That that was really the I think the if I remember right now, you guys can fact check me if you want, but I don't know if you're going to find any articles that are that old. But <laughs> I believe it was any computer made after 75 or 1975 was okay. Like, I think it had the ability to go into the 2000s. I think it was up to 29.99 or something mm-hmm. like that. It wasn't going to work. But if you bought a computer in 1975, first of all, how are you still alive in 29.99? But second of all... 29.99? Yeah, like it would go up to almost the year 3000. Oh, wow. But if you're still using a computer that was built in the 70s, we have not advanced enough in this civilization. <laughs> yeah, it's time for an upgrade, yeah. is what he's saying. It's definitely time for an upgrade. Mm-hmm. So, but oh my god, I, I have this like one hair that's not quite long enough, and I'm <laughs> so distracted by it. Anyway, I fixed it. I just, I um, what did you do that night? Do you remember what you did on Y2K on the year 2000s Eve? I think I had a LAN party, which, mm. given the fact that everyone thought technology was just gonna combust, was honestly not very um responsible of us <laughs> well, seriously there could have been an explosion in the house mm-hmm. but no we had a big land party mm-hmm. for new year's and we played quake and half-life and whatever else you kids played back then mm. all night and we okay. stayed up and yeah i um at the time i was uh i was heavy into the church that i went to and they had a youth group and we had like this overnight party there. Mm-hmm. So as it's counting down, they have a projector playing on the uh, the like screen that's on the main stage area, and it's like counting down. You see the apple falling, and it's like five, four, three, two, all the lights go out. My buddy and I thought it was hilarious. Did you do it? Yes, we oh, turned off. No. We turned off all the lights, and my buddy hit stop on the projector. We did, and then it just went dark in the. Uh, um, did people the, panic? Everybody's like, <gasps> and then we turned it back on, and everybody laughed. <laughs> there was a couple people that were a little grumpy about it, but mostly the people in charge. <laughs> oh, you're so rude! And yeah. you did that at a church. Mm-hmm. You're going to hell. Probably. <laughs> But no, we we thought it was funny, and but it was only in that room, so that's funny. Now, if I would have went to like the breaker, the circuit breakers, <laughs> and shut down all the breakers in the church, then they arrest me. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember too much about what happened that mm-hmm. night. I don't remember what happened at midnight. I think we all just went, "All right, we're still playing. Let's keep going." And then I made waffles for everybody, and then hey. we're good. <laughs> I probably would have been on like the kill streak of my life, going, and then all of a sudden, boom! I'd be like, no. Yeah, I'm saying it was irresponsible, but we probably did it because of the irony of the mm-hmm. situation. Like, let's play computer stuff all night. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so that was back in the days of the LAN parties. My mm-hmm. my tower had a little handle on it. Mm-hmm. Easy access, easy carting it places, place to place. I'm sorry, I'm a little distracted. My cat just body slammed the door <laughs> trying to get in here. So, and this hair will not quit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, oh man, I just remember the fun and excitement that was leading up to it. It was like, oh, it's a dawning of a new era. It's the new year. And You didn't go to high school. You were homeschooled, mm-hmm. right? So you wouldn't have been able to tell me if your local high school had a Y2K-themed prom. I think a couple of them did, but... Do y'all hear that? He's, like, desperately trying to get in here. <laughs> I, think, I think a couple of them did, but I think it... Around where I grew up, it was all the generic proms, you know, like, I think they had, like, futuristic, and like, so yeah. like, silvers and purples and things like that. Yeah, I think my high school had a Y2K-themed prom, which I think is kind of silly to, mm-hmm. to have because, I mean, what, what, what year did you graduate? 2000. What was your prom theme? Y2K. You mean year 2000? Wow, original. Mm. You know? I don't even remember my prom theme, though. Yeah, it's like I'm excited. But I, I, I was 2001, ah. not 2000. Yeah, I was class of 2000, so mm-hmm. like I'm class of 00. And then people are like, oh, I was born in 04. And I'm like, mm. oh, That hurts, doesn't yeah. it? My 30 year reunion is next year. No, 20. Mm-hmm. 20. Ha, 20. <laughs> <laughs> not that old. Yeah, mine would have been not this y- year. Not yet. <laughs> but I didn't get to go to my 20 year. 
I don't have one mostly, and plus I didn't get to go see my mom. Yeah, I guess you would have. <laughs> you were gonna go. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. We my, will. We will soon. Yeah. We will soon. Um, so imagine back then mm-hmm. that somebody told you, "All right, all right, the world isn't gonna end in 2000." Oh. But let me tell you about 2020. Would you have believed any of it? Would you have believed anything that happened this year? I mean, what are you going to tell me? Okay, so there were a, a global pandemic. Global pandemic. Uh, toilet paper shortage. Toilet paper shortage. Um, what else we got? Uh, we got the, the wildfires in Australia. There and was, in California. And in California. There was also the uh, killer hornets. Murder hornets. Murder hornets. Murder hornets. And what else? Uh, major protests across the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would have been like... Well, Wait, it's... an election that has so far lasted two months. Mm. <laughs> no one saw that one coming. <laughs> yeah. I would have been like, you, you know those writers who are trying really hard to fit in all their ideas into a book or a into movie? Into the last season? Yeah. And yeah. they're like, they're like, hey, you guys aren't being renewed for the next one. We got to kick everything Put off. it all in there. Uh... <laughs> they're like, well, this was a realistic show. Now so-and-so has superpowers. Okay. <laughs> but whatever works. I would have been like, you're nuts. There's no way though that's gonna happen in a year. I mean, and I'm right. It didn't happen in a year. It happened. It in happened nine in months. eight or nine months. Yeah, <laughs> all of it in nine months. This is absolutely crazy. But I just thinking, we were we were talking this morning about how Y2K was mm-hmm. the big bad. We mm-hmm. were so scared, and here we are in 2020, going, man, Y2K sounds real good right now. Um, yeah. Can we just reset everything? Is that is that a thing? Can we have a Y twenty one? I you could not have made me believe that all of this stuff was going to happen this year. I never thought that I would live through a pandemic. First of all, none of us ever thought we'd have to live through the, the bubonic plague mm-hmm. era, essentially. And I didn't know that I would be be in such a central area of really important and really significant protests Mm -hmm. that lasted for a very very long time and you know for protests like that to happen for them to last like a month Mm -hmm. at least that's a long time and for it to be like literally down the street Mm -hmm. i never thought i'd experience that you couldn't have told 17 year old me that i would experience that Mm -hmm. and i would have went oh yeah cool i would have went where did i go to college like where did i end up living i i've like I didn't live through like the the riot or not right, the um, uh, rallies and the like protests that were happening on it in like the '60s. Yeah, that, that's what that. I'm saying. Like, but, I remember but we that lived there through were, these now. There were yeah, there were one. There were like protests and stuff that happened like in the '90s with Rodney King and different things throughout the different years. But I didn't get to experience what happened in the '60s because I my parents were barely old enough to do that. <laughs> but to be around and to see the power that it has this year it's been truly monumental it's been such a cool experience to see how this is you know when you're a kid in school and they say one person can make a difference no literally we got to Mm -hmm. see that in action Mm -hmm. one person makes a difference Mm -hmm. one person times this many Mm -hmm. makes a big difference you know and you get to see that and again if you had told me that the 2020 election would last two months and mm-hmm. still not know really anything, I would have been like, I'm sorry. Like, Let me go back to my political science textbook. And really? Yeah. Can they do that? <laughs> like, and even 90s me, if you would have been like, oh, in 2020, Trump's going to be president. I'd have been like, the guy from Home Alone? Oh my God, Home Alone right? too. I mean, like, I'd right? have been like, that guy? Because oh, I didn't know who he was when I was I didn't know who he was. I, I would have been like, business guy, but oh, I the guy know. that owns the tower in New York? Yeah, like... like you had have been like, what? It's like, it's literally like Demolition Man where you're next you're going to tell me that Arnold Schwarzenegger was president in 2024. And then we're going to get Demolition Man. Just, like Demolition. do you know how to use the three seashells? No clue, but <laughs> I know how to get paper. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's it's interesting mm-hmm. that how we would have reacted to everything. And on this on this uh, podcast, we're trying not to get political, mm-hmm. but it we would be remiss if we didn't like acknowledge what happened oh, yeah. this year we're not even getting political mm-hmm. we're saying we lived through protests mm-hmm. we lived through a plague mm-hmm. we are still currently living through a plague mm-hmm. we are we donald trump became president and now the election has lasted 
it's still going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's still going as we film this. This is this is absolutely something I never would have anticipated. This is stuff that was written in a B movie. Yeah. It's literally like the dollar <laughs> bin at Walmart. Someone was like, hmm. So you're telling me that a this movie is about a guy who is a multi-millionaire who decides to run for president and then he gets hit with a giant plague and then murder hornets. Perfect. <laughs> like, what? Who writes this? But really, like, thinking about how back in the day we, everyone was so scared of Y2K, mm -hmm. that was just the warm-up. Mm -hmm. Like, 2020, if I could go back in time and, like, actually mess with people, I'd be like, if you think Y2K is going to be bad, just wait till 2020. And they'd be like, well, we're going to get to 2020. And I'll be like, that's, it's not a good thing. Hmm. <laughs> just start looking around like, they're following me. And then just run from the mm -hmm. person. They'd have been like... Yeah, make sure you stock on, stock up on toilet paper and then just run away. And they'll be like, what? <laughs> just look at them and Are go. Are they going to outlaw toilet paper? Are we not allowed to like have it? <gasps> no, they'd freak right. out. And then you're going to find out in 2020 that there's like a person who's got like two houses full of full toilet Full of paper. it. They're like, why did you do that? <laughs> well, in 1999, these two people came to me and was like, toilet paper, mm -hmm. you need it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, no, it's... It's just wild because it's back then it was a, a possible issue, you know, that could happen to computer systems. And I remember the big thing that they were worried about was the stock market and like computers at like hospitals. Yeah. Because those are the ones that got like the upgrades first. Mm -hmm. I remember that because they were afraid someone on life support and all of a sudden it re, you know, resets and it's like, oh, well. This wasn't armed then, so it's not going to be active on their life yeah. support. That was one of the big things that they were worried about, which is glad that they thought about that. Yeah. But, you know, I wasn't too worried about my PlayStation <laughs> getting updated. I wasn't real worried about it, I mm -hmm. guess. I remember watching, was it Escape from New York? Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler alert coming for that. So skip ahead, like. 30 seconds if you don't want to hear this but at the end of escape from you from new york you remember how he hits the button that just like resets all mm -hmm. technology and there's no technology at all yeah i was actually like that is cool let's do that mm -hmm. we're too reliant on technology let's do that and now i'm a youtuber and let's <laughs> not do that right um but like back then i thought that was such a good idea so i guess that's why i wasn't too concerned about y2k like yes i was a gamer but at the same time i'm like yeah it would be nice to go back and make everybody play outside and write and and nowadays that's something that people are they get very like heated about kids these days are on the computer too much and they don't get out enough and i'm like okay but as a youtuber could you like not tell them that real quick mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I do agree as a as a fitness instructor and as a school teacher i do agree that kids spend too much time on technology mm -hmm. but that's why there's games like the new one that just came out for the nintendo switch that is actually like a workout mm -hmm. video game and so they're creating ways of keeping kids like active yeah. physically but also anyone who's upset about kids gaming I have written actual papers, and I'm talking like near dissertation level papers mm. on how much you can like grow in your in your brain power and in your skills by playing video games. They've they've done multiple tests scientifically, and honestly, like the Air Force and the military prefers people who uh, have a strong video game background for different things. Like the Air Force actually seeks people who are. Um, video game players that do like a lot of flight simulators mm -hmm. because they can fly the drones a lot better already. Mm -hmm. And then you got the people like they've learned that video games teach people problem solving skills way faster than a traditional. So like if you're like, if you're like, Oh my gosh, I only got X amount of time to figure out this puzzle in this game. Otherwise Lara Croft's going to die. <laughs> you're going to figure it out. But then, Oh, then they should hire everyone who knew how to play mist. No, that's going to be the people who are on search and rescue to find what the, yeah. what the level does. <laughs> if you haven't ever played Myst and you're really bored, play it. Yeah, M Y S T. And if you if you make it through that game, play Riven. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
And then tell us what the lever does. <laughs> <laughs> there is one lever. But I don't even know the de- if the developers know what it does. My friend Sarah and I used to play Myst all the time. Mm-hmm. She loved puzzle games, and I bet she knows what the lever does. I should I message you, her later and find out. I bet you out. that the creator of the game, one of the developers, was like, wouldn't it be funny if I just put one lever in this game and it did nothing? <laughs> or it opens, like, the door at the beginning of the game. that you're. It's, like, close to the end, and you're, like, 100 miles back, and you're like, ugh. So... Okay, another imagine if you could go back and tell these people mm-hmm. kind of thing. Go back to 1999. Okay. And tell yourself mm-hmm. that one day pro gaming would be an Olympic level sport mm. on ESPN. What would you say? Hey, man, you know those skills you got? You want to make some money? Keep practicing. And would you have believed you? I probably would, because I'd be like, why would me lie to me? <laughs> I'd be like, me, why are you lying? <laughs> but no, I mean, if I would have ever thought about that, if I would have, because I did Call of Duty and Halo tournaments thing here, I wasn't even the best one out of my friends, and I did them, and I did okay. Mm-hmm. But now these kids are making millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean to disrespect anybody by calling them a kid, but most of the average player is between 18 and 21. And that means I was like, 10 to what 14 10 to 13 before they were born Mm -hmm. so yeah they're kids (laughs) to me (laughs) but no these kids are making crazy millions of dollars winning these tournaments Mm -hmm. and i would not have believed you Mm -mm. you could have told me that pro gaming was going to be like esports was going to be a thing i would never have believed you and now i'm going to be coaching the esports team at the school that i teach for that's awesome that is really awesome. I'm very excited. We keep not being able to get it off the ground, though. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I keep trying to tuck that one hair back. I'm sorry for the for those that can't see this. Like for those on YouTube, you're like, yeah, that hair is kind of weird. It's just like, hanging it's out just, like, like hello. Like a little ping sticking out. And but yeah, I um, I would I probably would have believed me after a little bit, but I'd have been like. Why are you telling me this? I wouldn't have believed it. But there's so much that I wouldn't have believed from mm-hmm. the year, from the turning of 1999 to 2000 mm-hmm. to today's turning from 2020 to 2021. Yeah. And this this video is coming out on New Year's Eve. So as you're listening to this, if you're listening to it on the day it's coming out, it's New Year's Eve. It's hey. going to be 2021 tomorrow. I would not have believed most of what you guys would say about my life, about the, the world itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that drones are a thing. You could have talked about drones and I would have been like, what, like in the military? (laughs) Not like like the guy next door. No, you can buy one over at Five Below. (laughs) Yeah, the guy next door has a drone and he's constantly using it. And he's like surveilling the the neighborhood. And it's funny, is the guy next door has it and then the guy next to him has one. Yeah. And they just do it because they enjoy flying them. Yeah, and you know what? You know what else? You could never have gotten me to believe that there would be a cat in this neighborhood that hangs out in our backyard with a surveillance camera in their collar. Mm-hmm. They, I don't know why this cat has that. Yeah, he's got a little GoPro. It's yeah, like attached to his collar. He's got a GoPro collar. attached to his collar. And Nobody every, could have made me believe I, that. I'm like this close to like going and petting him and taking it just to see like and then seeing what's on the memory card because I want to see what he does and then I'll put it back. I'll be like, I'll record myself. Hey, I'm going to put this right back. I just wanted to see what this was. Have a mm-hmm. great day. They'd have been like, I know who that is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, but I yeah. just no, you could not have made me believe that. I don't know that I would have believed that there was little cameras that you that were small enough mm-hmm. to attach to my cat. Little tiny camera. That's like the stuff out of spy movies mm-hmm. from back then. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. So here we are, 2020, mm-hmm. the end of turning to 2021. And we thought Y2K was going to be the scariest year of our lives. Mm-hmm. We thought that the turning of the year from 99 to 2000 was going to be the scariest thing. But here we are embarking upon 2021, having lived through the craziest year that anyone could have written Mm -hmm. for humanity are you scared about what could be coming like could it get worse i mean i'm clearly (laughs) it could get worse 100 percent. but i'm also on that fence of well maybe they've gotten through enough stuff in this you know mission and now it's the easy way in the game you know where it's like you go through all the hard part now it's just like the easy coasting spot. coasting home yeah i would like that or can we're not that? at the final boss yet that could Ooh. be the other half of it if you're going to call it a video game let's call it like it is and maybe the final boss comes in 2021 we don't know 
So I'm hoping that we don't have a final boss. I'm hoping, <laughs> but maybe coronavirus was the final boss, and we're we're we've got what we need. Bento is really trying to get into this room. I'm so sorry. He's so mad. But you know why we lock him out? He keeps stealing our chair. As soon as I like, get up, he's in not there. even as soon as you get up. He he'll jump on it and push me off. Yeah. He did that while we were Twitch streaming last night, and then the the girl that runs the Twitch uh, background for the stream, she's like, show everyone the cat. I'm like, he weighs like 50 pounds. I can't lift him. He's a big boy. He's well, yeah. huge. He doesn't actually weigh 50 pounds. It's more like 20, yeah. but still. Yeah, he's, but, a, he's, a, he's close to the weight of the litter bags. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that was our exploration mm -hmm. of... Y2K from today's perspective and what a what a ride yeah. what a ride the last 20 years have been it's been wild and uh I'm hoping that 2021 you know I'm not gonna be like new year new me oh uh, no or, never say that ever 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 I'm if you want a new you start today you know I'm hoping for <laughs> Wait, new easy. year 2019 me can I get that one back a little skip 2020 and just give me 2019 me. what's wrong with 2020 you a lot of I meant like the world. Oh, okay, you know, I was about that, to say you're you're cool. You should. I'm okay. You've you've become awesome. Oh, thanks. I'm okay. You're but okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for mm -hmm. spending a lot of this crazy year with us. It's been yeah. a ride, and we can't wait to continue into 2021 with you guys. We've got lots of different ideas for topics for this podcast, and we've also got tons of other videos mm -hmm. coming to our channel. We have some new branding coming. Hey. Um, we've got a lot of new content. You're gonna see some survival skill tips you're gonna see some art you're gonna see some music it's gonna be we're basically we're very multi-talented and we're gonna take those talents and turn them into useful videos for this channel yeah. so um if you are listening to us on the podcast make sure you check us out on uh youtube and right now it's youtube.com slash safety scissors duct tape um that may change so yeah. we will let you know but right now that's the address and uh, if you're watching us on youtube you already know how to find us <laughs> um do you want to do the question oh yeah the question of the day for last the week. last question of 2020 so Sorry, i got a notification that people are playing among us i was like what <laughs> i was like no no we're not um so the question last week was what was the best-selling rock album of the 1990s did now let know? me let me be clear. This was my favorite album of the '90s, and one of my favorite albums still to this day. And it was the first full-length album I ever owned. Mm. To give you more hints, because I know we talked about that in the music episode. Oh yeah. It is Alanis Morissette's "Jagged Little Pill," mm. best-selling rock album of the entire '90s decade. That's wild. That's my girl. Mm. That's my girl. She crushed it. Yep. So for next week, the first answer of 2021, what fad toy was feared to be a tool for foreign spies? Ooh. So think about that one. Let us know in the comments what you think the answer is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've had a blast doing these. I'm so excited to continue them into the new year. Mm -hmm. It's been an absolute blast. Just the ideas that you guys have given us, the talks. and Your the... comments give us so much life. Again, we get behind on answering them, especially as, you know, the semester winds down because teacher, you know. But we uh, we love reading them mm -hmm. and we love the conversations that they spark. So mm -hmm. thank you. And thank you guys so much for the messages that you guys have reached out to us on our social media yes, and talked to us. You guys have been amazing and you guys have definitely helped us get through, a, like we said, a rough year. So You guys are the reason that we got through this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be perfectly honest. You guys on YouTube and anyone listening to this podcast mm -hmm. and anyone who's been able to interact with us. Because the thing is, we're extroverts. Mm -hmm. And this year was not the year for extroverts. We are performers and we didn't get to really perform. And we love being out in the crowds and on stage and also in the center of attention. And yeah, we can't do that. Nope. So you guys have helped feed our extrovert battery. Mm -hmm. So extrovert, no, extrovert battery. Mm -hmm. Anyway... Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, this was great. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on YouTube and or, or podcasts. You can subscribe. It's, it's subscribing. Either subscribe or follow, depending yeah, on Yeah, sure. Um, Do the thing for the podcast and uh, subscribe on YouTube and also hit that thumbs up button on YouTube so other people find this a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. There aren't a lot of 90s podcasts on YouTube, so it'd be really, really cool if more people knew that we were doing this and could enjoy reminiscing with, our, with us about our favorite decade. Yeah. So. Well... I'm Safety Scissors. And I'm Duct Tape. Thank you so much for listening to episode 10.
of the Safety Scissors and Duct Tape Podcast. We're out of here. Thank you.